Welcome to Talking Buffalo, featuring conversations with guests from around the world of sports, media, pop culture, and all things Buffalo, with your host, Patrick Moran. All right, what is going on, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to another episode of Talk at Buffalo, your weekday daily driver for Buffalo Sports Talk and more. Today's episode is presented by Golf Dojo. Your space, your time, your game. Bring your game to Golf Dojo, Western New York's best indoor golf experience. Visit mygolfdojo.com. My name is Patrick Moran. Big thank you, as always, to everybody out there for watching, listening, following, subscribing. I do appreciate y'all very much. Um, Technical difficulties is the name of the game right now. If you are watching on the video side anyway, try to do this live on Wednesday night. A little TV after dark here when my guests I'm going to bring in now Joe from Queens. Second time in the last couple of days I've had Joe on the show. And I don't know what it is, man. I'm using a StreamYard app. I can't figure it out. I fucking hate technology. Uh, when I started streaming, it wouldn't stream to Twitter. Then you and I were like three, four minutes into the episode and bam, it clunked out. It was being, it was still being shown live on YouTube and on our Talk Buffalo YouTube or, or YouTube channel. I don't know what the hell is going on, but we're at it again. Audio people, 99% of you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about and only a handful on the video side. But anyway, Joe from Queens, thanks for being the emergency quarterback, man. You've went from tape delay guy to, well, tried to be live, live. on the video side guy, emergency no. quarterback, man. How you doing? Thanks for being up so late too. We're we're recording this really late on a yeah, on a Wednesday um, night. It's a school night. You know, I got work tomorrow. So let's let's get to it. Chop chop. No, 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 no <laughs> bullshitting. No Marge Simpson dresses, any of that crap. Let's go. What's up? That take what went over it? well, by the way. I I, I gotta uh, say that. That take went uh, over well. So go back if you if you don't you're no, like, what the what no, the hell is no, Joe talking going, about? Keep going. What is what is Joe talking about? People are saying talking about a Marge Simpson dress. You're on the show a couple of days ago and you had a great reference to me with content about a, a March Simpson dress. I don't want to give it away. Go back a couple of days and, and check it out. It was funny. A lot of feedback from people, uh, fans of the show on, on social media. We're going to spend some time today talking about the Bills wide receiver room. I still feel, you know, we're going into getting ready for a second preseason game. Regular season now around the corner. Questions with the wide receiver room seem to be as plentiful now as they were before training camp started, it's not been a, a great summer for the back end, at least anyway, of the Bills wide receiver room. We'll talk about that. I'm sure the name Stefan Diggs is probably going to come up at some point because I put out a tweet today on Wednesday that got a lot of attention, most of it negative. So we're going to do that. And then I got a list that I want to run down with you, which you'll pretend that you're vaguely interested anyway. Six Buffalo Bills players who uh, I think need to be ready to to step up because they're under the radar guys right now. But I think they may end up having a much bigger role on this football team this year mm -hmm. than what it feels like right now. All yeah. right. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it before this <laughs> thing blows up. <laughs> the difference between an energetic, uh, I want to talk your ear off, Joe from Queens, I want to force my takes down your throat, and the dude who's doing me a solid right now so I don't have to go at this episode alone after a couple things what a fucking disaster this whole Wednesday has been, by the way. I got to throw that out there. But the, end, the energy I'm sorry to hear right that, buddy. not exactly there. I'm but. just ready. Let's just go. I told you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, I, let's go through these I got, topics. I, I, wanted to start, I wanted to start with uh, some football news, not Bill's news, but a, a sure. divisional rival made a pretty big move today. The New England Patriots traded Matthew Judon, their best pass rusher, maybe the bad, best pass rusher in the AFC East, to be honest with you, uh, to the Atlanta Falcons for – a third round pick. I know you don't really have a take on that. You really don't care. I think it just further. I do uh, care. I mean, that's an interesting move by New England in terms of Junon's one of their better players, obviously. But yes, go ahead. It's, kind, it's kind of just further symbolizing the fact that this is a team that's completely rebuilding right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Young rookie mm -hmm. quarterback, a lot of young players, and they got a third round pick, which is a nice haul for a guy, you know, on a team where they weren't going to be a contender. Anyway, this trade bothers me, but not for the reason that a lot of people would think. And just give me two, let me indulge you for two minutes, Joe. Um, two minutes, we're getting, Jesus. Go we're ahead. Getting some Bill stuff. I, I got pissed when I heard about this trade. Not because Matthew Judon got traded. I'm like, good, you know, it's twice a year. He won't be out there trying to bring Josh Allen down. 
I'm mad because he went to Atlanta. And you're probably thinking, like, well, why, why would you give a shit that he goes to the Atlanta Falcons? Well, I mean, I've documented it somewhat on this show that Damone Harris, who plays for the Atlanta Falcons, is a close family friend. He's a defensive end. Um, he, I follow him very closely in Atlanta. I um, talk to a couple of Atlanta Falcons beat reporters almost daily, trying to get a lowdown of how he's doing, um, what are his chances of making the team. Demo's been in the, he's 28 years old. He's been in the NFL since 2018. Um, you know, back and forth between the practice squad and the active roster. He's one of those fringe players, you know, and every, we talked about this a little bit on Tuesday's show when we were arguing about the preseason, what matters and what don't. It's kind of why I push back when people say the preseason means nothing because I personally know players in this league where they're fringe guys, man, and every practice, <clears throat> and especially every preseason game, can be life or death for their career. But anyway, Damone's having a really good camp. In fact, I saw a couple articles written about him. He played a really good first preseason game. He was getting second-team reps, even a couple looks with the first team. But he's a fringe guy. He's like... Kingsley Jonathan and the Buffalo Bills. That's probably mm -hmm. the best comparison I could say for him right now. And now they just traded for Judon. So that pushes you down the depth chart. So that's probably, hope I'm wrong, but that's probably going to be a big blow to, to his chances of making the football team. So I was like, damn, that fucking really sucks. And he's a Buffalo dude, man. Born and raised in Buffalo, Bishop time in high school, walk on at UB, earn a scholarship, gets undrafted. Goes to the NFL, bounces around, wins a Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, he's a guy to really root for, even if you don't know him. And I do know him personally. So, I don't know. That just kind of sucks. They used a, a high pick on a defensive end in the draft, and now they fucking trade for, for Judon. Just wanted to get that rant out there. Thanks for, for listening. listening. <laughs> oh, hopefully, maybe he'll <laughs> make the team for, for special teams purposes, maybe. You know, and uh, that's always how you make it. Like I said, he's a, a Kingsley Jonathan, maybe a Casey Two Hill on this team. Somebody who's like at the fringe. Who he was Casey on the practice Tuhill. squad. I've never heard of that guy. Okay, <laughs> well, he's a free agent signing. But anyway, uh, yeah. a guy Sounds who like might a fake name, a, but go a, ahead. A, a bubble guy who might you know one move and you're on the outside looking in. That's kind of <clears throat> sure. what Demo may be right now. Hopefully, he just balls out because hell, if he doesn't make the Atlanta team and he keeps playing like he he does, maybe uh, another team will will pick him up. But anyway, Matthew Judon goes to. Uh, Atlanta. Also, right before we started recording this, Jordan Phillips, apparently he was with the New York Giants, just got, got traded. traded to the Dallas Cowboys. I didn't even, I legit, I just tweeted this out, I legit didn't even know Jordan Phillips was still playing. I thought he was retired. Um, yeah, <clears throat> what an interesting trade. Like, Jesus, like he traded, like, I, want, I don't even, what's the compensation? Did they say what the Phillips, compensation it, was? Jordan Phillips in a seventh for a sixth. Interesting. So uh, obviously a very small trade, but uh, you know he's you know I I always like Jordan Phillips. I thought he did you know I think injuries kind of like derailed him the last couple of years here. Like when he's on the field and he's healthy, he's pretty good, but he just doesn't. He's just he's, he's broken just, down he was, sadly. He, he was a lesser version, a much lesser version to me of Ed Oliver. He's a splash player. Like he yeah. can come up, make some pretty big plays. You know, a lot of guys at that position don't really make plays. He was a playmaker, but he also disappeared. He was awful against the run and he was just a bonehead with stupid penalties and he could stay on the field. So right. I was glad the Bills didn't resign him. But anyway, I didn't even know he's with the, the Giants. Is Shaq no Lawson else. around? I was just thinking about Shaq Lawson the other day. Is uh, he signed with anyone? That is a great question. I, to my knowledge, no. When you're talking at some point in the show, I'll probably go and I'll look yeah, it up. Like, to my knowledge, I don't think he's on a team right now. I thought um, he did pretty well last year. He was okay, like for their role last year. Like, he, just yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a role he's guy a, now. He's a fifth defensive end. He's he, he's pretty good against the run, pretty stout against the run, and just doesn't would you really say, have any would you say, pass rusher. Would you say Jack Lawson was a bust of a draft pick or no? Yes, uh, you for have first? to say that. Yeah. I, what, what do you think? I mean, he he's a he, he's a first round pick, and I mean, I mean he's, he had a, he's had a long career, so I guess maybe not in that regards. But in terms of being an impactful player, uh, anyway, he is a free agent as of right yeah. now. I just I was looking it up, so yeah, he's not on a team right now. I don't think he officially retired either. So yeah, anyway. I I don't think he's a bust. You, you play in the league for like ten years, and he did start. You know, he fair. wasn't as good as like. They you know, probably I take wanted him to bat. You know, he played a long time, and you know, he took him a while to really adjust. And I always say, like, I always feel that defensive linemen, it takes them a couple of years to really find their own. Like, you yeah. don't you don't find rookie defensive linemen who come in and they're like killing people right away. It's 
it's right. rare. It happens, but it's rare. But that's another guy. Just you can just look through the list of the Bills defensive linemen since we've been watching, and you don't have too many rookie of the years who who come in and get thirteen sacks or rookie year or anything like that. It takes a while, a couple of years to get to where you're like, point. oh, this good, this guy's good. So it's a good point, and I, I want to walk back that take. That was a dumb take because dumb one of the take. guys, just, well. One of the guys that are the six under the radar players that I was talking about who might have to step up. I'll give you a spoiler alert. And one of them is Kyrie Elam. Kyrie Elam's a first round pick. And if he comes in, he's a Dane Jackson this year. And he has, you know, he steps into a starting role because somebody gets hurt or what something happens and he plays relatively well. That don't necessarily mean he's a bust. You got some point you got to tell the first round pick out the window and just see what the guy does if he's a player in the mm-hmm. NFL. Maybe if you're a top 10 pick, like if Ed Oliver you know, he's a top 10 pick. If Ed Oliver was just me, you know, he's in the league. He's got a yeah, lot like of if, if Ed Oliver was, plus. yeah. Like when, where was Shaq drafted? He was like 17th, 18th around yeah, there. I yeah. Think. He wasn't in the top half of the first round. I that was that. Rex's, I don't know exactly where that was Rex's second year. Cause he got mm-hmm. him and then he got Reggie Ragland in, in the yeah. second round. Cause they went all defense, Yep, you know, and all that crap. So yep. memory lane um, fun. Before we dive into our two main topics real quick, because the Bills, when you're listening to this or watching this on Thursday, the Bills are practicing in Pittsburgh. They got a preseason game Saturday in Pittsburgh, but they're having a joint practice on Thursday. There was a point in time earlier where I was kind of excited about that, and that's completely changed. Um, Oh. Yeah, because, you know, in the preseason, look, your starters come out there. We saw it Saturday. Most of them, they have a cup of coffee. They get to the sidelines. They have to play it all. When you have a joint practice against another team, that's your ones and your twos that are getting most of the reps. So they're out there a lot. The quarterback ain't getting in touch, but pretty much everything else is fair game. And I was following along on Wednesday morning. The Vikings and the Browns were scrimmaging. And I'm like, holy shit, man. A lot of injuries. There's like five guys that got hurt, including Minnesota wide receiver Jordan Addison. Hurt his ankle during this practice. And uh, they're saying now the report is not that serious. See how long it's going to take, but Guys are going down in that scrimmage. And not to mention J.J. McCarthy, the Vikings rookie quarterback, they got in the first round, already tore his meniscus. He's done for the freaking season. I mean, that sucks if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan, obviously. But what, Was his injury, by the way, was it at this? That, this no, was it at no, he heard it a couple of days ago. I think it was, I think it was just at, I think it was just at a practice. So that okay. could just be a freak thing. You can't really, you know. Sure. That wouldn't make you, you got, you, Josh Allen needs to practice, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, um. I don't know. You hear about these injuries. So, so again, we're, we, you made it really clear the other night how you feel about the preseason, and a lot of people share your sentiment. Um, but joint practices with another team, is this something that you're a fan of? Because you can look at it this way. Your starters are getting more work. It's scripted. You know, it's not a game, but they're still doing drills, seven-on-seven, one-on-one, 11 on with the other team. And your ones and your twos are out there getting a lot more work than they would in a preseason game. So it's beneficial because you're getting that work you need, but the risk of injury, again, as we saw Minnesota, Cleveland, several guys getting banged up and going down, the higher risk involved. Like if you were Brandon Bean or Bagula or whoever it is, is that would be in charge of making this scrimmage. Would you do it? Would you like a joint scrimmage with another team? If you were a general manager, Probably not, because I mm-hmm. I believe in like guys resting, and I, I I can't say oh yeah I'm for it when I think training camp and preseason is bullshit. So I I tend to go in the you know I, I get why they do it. They probably do it because look they don't do four preseason games anymore. They do three. So right. like that's probably what they view as this is like this could be a mini preseason game. Uh, in terms of the injuries, like I don't know, like I haven't kept track in terms of like scrimmages over the years of guys getting hurt. Like so, today could have been just a one-off of of injuries being con- you know being worried about sure. during the scrimmage. Um, I mean, I yeah. try to I try to figure out like why were there injuries? Like, is it because people like you know because you always hear those excuses? Like these are all like these preseason tropes of like oh you got to hit someone else. You're sick of hitting your teammates, so you want to hit someone else and. And that, and maybe that you get a little bit too amped up because you want to hit other guys, and you know that could be it. I don't know, but um, you know, as a, as a fan, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would I would like them if I could go if there was like an open practice, like oh hey, I can go to the scrimmage and see other guys. And I don't think they're I don't know if they're open to the public in Pittsburgh. I don't, uh, I don't think so. The media yeah. will be it. The media is going to oh, be so the media wait. will yeah. be covering that. I know you can't wait for that. Okay, wait. It's going to be golfing probably beforehand and after. But uh, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, yeah. So I just I wouldn't. I, 
I, you know, I always, I look at it this way, a couple things. One, you know, I think back to 2020 when there was no preseason because of COVID and no OTAs and any of that. And I thought, yeah. I thought it was like the best Bills league season in freaking forever. And like there was so, the, the, the teams, the play was really good in terms of the league high. Everyone was passing up a storm and, and it kind of told me like, why the fuck do we need practice? Why do you need preseason? Why do you need any of this sort of stuff? So I don't know. I, I think some of this is just, I get it. Like how they view it. Like they want to know their death chart and all that shit. But, uh, you know, I, I'm of, I'm on the mindset of like rest your guys club Marv, like we talked about on the other podcast, but I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and go like, Oh man, this is like, you can't, you can't do these scrimmages because one guy, like a game was a bloodbath. Sure. You know, I, I and I also, I want to see like what the injuries are like long-term in terms of that, but, Probably Whatever. see a fight too. There'll be a couple fights. There'll Detroit, be a couple Detroit, training Detroit, camp. Detroit and the Giants last week had a you, had did a, you, a practice and did you see when the rookie got in a fight? Hmm? Did you see what Mayo said in New England about? Um, no. What did he, he say? He, he basically said that if you're starting, if you're a starting player and you start a fight during a scrimmage, because they have a scrimmage like with the Eagles, I believe, and they say if you if you and they're playing the Eagles this weekend as well in the preseason game. But he said. If you're a starter and you start a fight, you're playing the entire preseason game. If you're a backup quarterback and you start a fight, you're not playing in the preseason game. I thought that was kind of funny. I was like, that was pretty. That was pretty interesting. I was like, that's a fucking. That's a. That's a hot like. He's trying to a, lay the law down right away, man. That's yeah, pretty wild. But, but also, but also, like, you don't start fights then because who the who what starter wants to play the preseason? Game? And he could get away with that because New England doesn't have any stars anymore. It's not like <laughs> who the hell I don't. Even I, know I don't think. Starters I don't think. Are, think can you imagine if Josh Allen started a fight? And it's like, oh yeah, you got to play the whole preseason game. Like he'd be like, I'd kill, I'd kill the coach. But quick, quick know. question. Which sure. by the time a lot of people are listening or watching this on Thursday, if you're not listening or watching in the morning, this might have already happened, but. I'm asking you this for the record on late Wednesday night. Sure. If the Bills get into a, a tussle with the Pittsburgh Steelers during this scrimmage, who's going to be the player? Like when you see a media tweet or a video, who's going to be the Buffalo Bill God. that is involved in a in a scuffle? With, it would probably be multiple people, but I'll just give me one. Give me one Buffalo Bills player. Let's say the first guy that you see or that you hear about that's getting into a fight with somebody with Pittsburgh. I was going to bet Chase Claypool, but he's no longer a Buffalo Bills. Yeah, Bowl. he's no longer there. Uh, I don't know. Shit. I, you know, it's funny. I think GR did something like this today. Did but, they? But, yeah, I, I think Jeremy White was I, – I saw him prom, I saw it on his text thread he has that – I got a pretty strong but idea. I, 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 he, I think he had said Elam, so I'm just gonna steal Jeremy White's take and go Elam. And is that what you're gonna steal too? So no, uh, I was gonna uh, say he, he's he's definitely one though. He's a I'm very gonna, vocal, I'll, I'll, handsy guy. So he's a great pick. I said Spencer Brown. Spencer Brown feels like the guy to me. They're gonna be trying to do some kind of run drill. A, Pittsburgh yeah. a little chippy, and Spencer Brown, big ass Spencer Brown's gonna go. Do off. the Steelers have any players on there that played for? The I'm Bills? sure they any do. Of that I don't know. I, 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 I really I, uh, doesn't Tremaine Edmonds' brother play for the Steelers? Still, well, yeah, or, I, I think he or maybe or I, <laughs> he I don't used remember. To, I haven't read I up on remember. Pittsburgh. I just know their quarterback situation is a mess. I know that they're going to be 500 or better and they'll be in the playoff hunt. That's just literally what they are every season, yeah, with just... uh, <laughs> with Mike Tomlin. Um, yeah. all right, I want to talk receivers for a few minutes. And by the way, I'm doing a pretty good job of masking how freaking annoyed I am with StreamYard, this app oh, that we do the Lord. video on right now. We were trying to go live, and you got to pay now to be able to stream on Twitter. The pre—I mean, we already do pay. You got to pay even more now. You got to be at the premium level to be able to live stream on Twitter. What a bunch of bullshit! Sons they must have got it. I'm sure they got some analytics that just showed how many people are actually watching on Twitter. So anyway, long I'm going to be shopping around. Um, I do apologize <laughs> to the handful of people who were originally watching this live. If you happen to be watching or listening to this right now, anyway. All right, so Buffalo Bills wide receiver room. Uh, a little bit of news. The Bills actually signed two guys this week. Uh, Demir Bird, Deion Kane. Uh, I'm sure the casual fan might be saying who. Um, Bird is 31 years old. If they get in a playoff run, he's going to end up 32. He last caught a pass with the Atlanta Falcons in 2022. He was good with the Patriots. I don't know if you remember him being with the Patriots back in 2020. I do not, no. He had 47 catches, 604 yards uh, with the Patriots. And that was 2020? This was back in 2020. So he He's, had Mac Jones throwing to him. Yeah, he, he, he returned. He returned or, kicks. No, it wasn't. It wasn't my apologies. No, I'm sorry. It was Cam Newton. Cam Newton was 2020. 
Correct. So it was Cam, Correct. yeah, because Mac was yeah, 2021, yeah. yeah. He's returned kicks before, but not since Carolina, which, by the way, there's always a Carolina connection, of course. Oh, my God. 2018, uh, he returned kicks with them. So they signed him. They signed Deion Kane. Deion Kane is 28 years old. He was the MVP of the USFL title game last year. Uh, he's a Birmingham yes. Stallions legend. Three touchdowns. He knows the rock, maybe, in the since they own that shitty league. Well, he also <laughs> has not caught a pass in the NFL since 2019. So yeah. it's been a minute. The Bills. I saw one of the Bills bro beat guys had said that he was a breakthrough deep threat for the Bills. And I was like, oh, he's okay. fast. These yeah. guys are fast. They are fast. Um, oh, yeah. I, I will say that. Going to catch but 100 look, balls this year. They yeah. ain't done shit in at least a, a couple of years. Um, they're burners who really, again, no NFL track record recently, anyway. Um, reports circulated on Wednesday, too. And I thought this was actually interesting. The Bills mm -hmm. worked out, apparently, Corey Davis. Corey yeah. Davis was the fifth overall pick, but you got to go all the way back to, uh, to 2017. Um, he was a fifth overall pick with the Titans. He was good. Again, 2018, he was good. 2020, almost had 1,000 yards receiving. But these are guys who have not been productive in four or five years in the NFL. He did catch 32 passes with the Jets. But considering Zach Wilson was the quarterback in 2022, that's a minor miracle. But he's yeah. like literally retired. He retired last year. He didn't play in the NFL last year. He retired August 2023. The Bills, it's like, all right, they cut Chase Claypool. I, I think Brian Thompson or something like that got cut. Injury settlement as well. Chase Claypool, he didn't get cut. I'm sorry. He's on IR with the toe. Um, what are we doing here? I mean, who do I get it. You need bodies for the preseason. I understand that. Man, man we're in August and you're getting street veterans that have been around for this long. It's like... I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't like what's going on with the wide receivers. Well, the back half of this room. I know well, a lot of people will be like, it don't matter. Maybe it well, don't. So a couple of things with Corey Davis. It's interesting because like his his best season in terms of catches and yards would be mm -hmm. more, well, and specifically yards would be more than any play in the Bills wide receiver room right now because no one else has had oh, sure. close to 1,000 yards, which is, I guess that's where they're at. Um, In terms of like, like being concerned. I mean, yeah, I've been concerned since freaking for the last two years. I've been concerned with the wide receiver room. Um, I guess my question to you is why are you now all of a sudden more concerned than you were two weeks ago? Like, Good did point. you really, did you really think like Chase Claypool was going to be the guy? I mean, he was, he was low risk, high reward as the, as don't the put that on me. I want me I, saying I, that I, shit. I know, but I'm just saying the bro, the content bros said that. And a lot of fans, a lot of fans. You, high yeah. Risk. And, or low high risk, risk, that's the reward. bullshit. Yeah, and I'm sure if they it's signed Davis, same thing. Low risk, high reward. Jerk I'll off, tell you whatever. why. You, go it's ahead. a good question. So I was not happy about the Chase Claypool signing, and I was very vocal about it. I was very happy about the MBS signing, and I was also very vocal about that as well. I thought when they got to camp, whether you liked the signings, whether you didn't, I thought we were going to see a nice knockdown, drag out battle. MBS, Claypool making some plays, even if it's just in their jersey and shorts without pads, looking the part. Chase Claypool uh -oh. did in OTAs. That's what we kept hearing about. I didn't get to see any of that in person, but a lot of reports said that. Again, I'm a big MV, or I was a big MBS guy, but uh, you get to camp and MBS has looked very average and ordinary to me, and he's doing the same things And I know, you know, he was already known for dropping passes, but you kind of hope he put that behind him. Well, guess what? He definitely has it. He didn't put that behind him in practice. He hasn't put it behind him in the game on Saturday. So I have not liked the way he looked. Chase Claypool, I'm a little befuddled because I vividly remember last practice, the last practice at camp last Thursday, he was running agility drills. I mistakenly thought, I, I don't know if I said this on sort of there or not. I thought, mistakenly thought it was Matt Collins. I'm like, because Matt Collins missed the practice and didn't play on Saturday because he had a foot injury. I'm like, Matt Collins looks fine. He's moving on and out of the ladder shoot. Pretty quickly. And the guy sitting next to me goes, well, that's not Matt Collins. That's uh, Chase Claypool. I was like, oh, oh, shit. So I was like, yo, Chase is going to be back next week. And then they were saying he was expected to be back in practice on Monday. He didn't. And then they put him on IR. So it's like over before it even started. But anyway, those were two guys who had done good things in this league. You know, regardless of how you felt about them right now, they've had uh, some track record uh, of credibility in the league. Claypool flat out just never materialized and MVS to this point anyway has not looked good. So that makes me kind of lose confidence in the back end of that. Well, room. It's a, I mean, 
So you're saying the preseason and training camp does, matters to you, and you're viewing it as they haven't blown your socks off, so you're, you're now a little bit concerned. Whereas me, yes. the more objective doesn't you know, doesn't succumb the pressure to have a take as much as people think I do. I'm waiting till week two or three, and then I'm gonna start throwing fucking puppies against the wall because I'm gonna be angry <laughs> at like the shitty wide receiving core probably. Um. Yeah, you know, with Ch- Claypool, it's interesting they put him on IR after it kind of was like, oh, he's going to come back soon. Sometimes I think they put players on IR because they're just like, we don't like you. We're going to cut you. Let's put you on IR. You get you get your signing bonus guarantee, and you can go somewhere else. Kind of. He, but he really didn't get it's, one. I'm confused. That's my point. Yeah, and they just, maybe the, they just the back half of the roster has looked shitty, and I'm telling you, he looked to me like a player who's getting ready to start practicing again, and then he's on IR. I they don't know. Just, maybe maybe they just didn't I, like him. Maybe they just didn't like him. It, he might get an injury settlement. And so then that would make him uh, eligible to resign with the bills or any other team. But why, why would yeah. he resign with the bills? I don't know what's going on, but it's just I mean, weird. To it's me. just, it's just funny. Like, cause I mean, we went through that, that whole, like whenever he signed, it was like the day of us people arguing about it. I, it was funny and whatever. And now we're, if Chase is gone for, if Chase is gone forever, it proves all the shit that you say, right. About yeah, OTAs and stuff like that. He was a star of OTA, apparently, before yeah, he was, by a he, lot by a lot of people. He was a star at OTA, and you're gonna cut him before he even gets on the field to see if he could play in a preseason game. You're that's why that shit doesn't mean shit. Cut. I yeah. shouldn't say cut. I meant IR. IR, but it's still. Just, I don't know. Maybe he's got a deal worked out with another team. Maybe they said, All right, we'll cut you in, or we'll put you on IR, we'll give you a release settlement. You go sign with whoever yeah. it may be. Look, the wide receiver I don't is, know. It, it's it's not great, Bob, uh, as the meme says. It's just it's just not. And this isn't news to us, by the way. You news, and I did an yeah. episode on this. You remember that we ranked all twenty or all thirty-two teams in the NFL. Their wide yeah. receiver room. We had the Bills twenty-fifth. So this isn't like new. I just was holding out hope. I think that I would see more from the back end. And I'm talking about by the back end. I'm talking about Claypool, MVS, and Matt Collins. Matt Collins has been fine in camp. He didn't play in the first preseason game. Can I just say games. about Matt Collins? I don't like him. I don't like a guy. Oh, I'm the opposite. West- I know, but I don't like a guy that has to shit on cats. Him saying that ca- kittens take your soul out of your fucking body. I'm sorry, but fuck that. Okay, cats rule. I have a cat. Until you have a cat, and I used to be probably like him. Like, oh, I didn't like cats. I had a cat. I have a cat now. It's great. I love it. So for him to say that, all his bullshit with his feet and the hipster shit and Dan Fentis going drooling over his his uh, pr- training camp story arc, uh, you know, Stay, you don't like me. the bare feet. You don't like the bare feet no, and the, the, and the bare beautiful feet's locker. Fine. The, the, that's fine. But once you say I hate cats, fuck that. I don't care if you come out there <laughs> with a fucking Russ Brandon's head on a platter. No, you're dead to me. Okay, like uh, you're you're shitting on cats. No, no. So sorry, <laughs> hipster wide receiver. You better have a hundred catches for sixteen hundred yards if you want me to like you. We're gonna talk about it in a little bit anyways. more. I specifically digress, because I actually have him amongst some players that I think might need to step up. But anyway, he's been fine in camp. Uh, and again, he didn't play in the preseason. But yeah, Claypool just never materialized. MBS, I need to see something, man. I need to see something. Oh my god, dude! We're la- I mean, look, he's I, shitty. I mean, he's. A sh- I I didn't like the signing. The guy dropped a lot. I, I said that when they signed him, if he had signed with Miami, Bills X would have made fun of the Dolphins for that because the guy drops so many passes. But. Again, got to chill. It's still early. Are you giving it's me therapy still... again? Yeah, I'm about to. I'm about I did to. work a little yeah, bit the other night. It, it, I was kind of listening back. I'm like, whoa, I am a little bit too hyped about a, yeah, about like, a Chicago Bears I, preseason game. I know. Like, you got to relax. Like, I get it. Like, I don't like the wide receiving core at all. I, I would call San Fran and, and give him. Can I throw Justin Shorter in there, too? Another disappointment in the back end. These were guys that oh, I, yeah. I thought the res- – all right. So, again, we power ranked the Bills wide receiver room 25th. You're a hype I, bro. I held I held out hope that i would be impressed the only receiver that has impressed me during camp was shavers shavers did have a good camp from what i own and i was at a handful of practices and i know he was the camp darling he we'll was the camp what darling. happens when the regular the season tight end was that gives if he if there even is a regular season for for shavers i'll tell you this though claypool getting cut probably or i keep saying cut him getting put on IR. In my mind, he got cut anyway. Sure. I, I think that helps Shavers because I think Claypool and Shavers were kind of direct competition because Claypool has some special teams value, whereas uh, MVS, again, zero special teams value. Um, I don't know, but it's just been the back half of this wide receiver room has just been shitty. And I jokingly, before we get a break here, 
I put out a tweet. And I mean, come on, man. I mean, uh, let me read. I want to make sure I, I, I read this word for word, because if I don't read it word for word, always think, angry when people you, give you shit you on Twitter. That's you how you are. The, I, that's Go true. Ahead. You you, I get it. I understand. I, I, I mean, it. I made the saying this word for word. I don't know how you can't take this as anything but sarcasm. I said, maybe the Bills should just trade a 2025 second round pick to the Houston, Texas for Stefan Diggs and be done with it. Holy shit, the feedback I, I'm getting, so much of it negative, oh. is crazy from Bills fans right now. Got to tell you, though, that's something, and I'm joking, that trade is going to be judged so much. If you think that Stefan Diggs, that trade is in the rear view in terms of content and people talking and writing about it, you're out of your mind because Absolutely. the way this wide receiver room is looking right now, Stefan Diggs, man, I don't know. It's like they gave you $30 million to bounce, to bounce. And you didn't really it's get a, a a great replacement for him. I, I got a, I got a friend, Joe. His name is shout you out have a friend? Huh. I do Go have ahead. a friend. He's apparently not a podcaster, though. Well, my buddy Mike was texting me. He still thinks the Bills are going to get Brandon Ayuk or should get him. I said, bro, you lost your mind. I, well, I, would, I know I you mean, I know you. I know you have to work the cap happening. and all that crap. Yeah, right. so. I would do it, too. Whoa, 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 so we're clear. I would do it, too. But sure. not but, doing it. They're not paying a receiver. Yeah. They didn't get rid of all this cap room, set themselves up. You know, so they could go pay a receiver $30 million right now. Should they? Yes. Would I? Yes. Are they? No. So I made that point to him and he was bitching and going nuts about it. He's like, you got one of the best two, three quarterbacks in the world and you're not going to set him up with the best weapons to succeed. That's bullshit. I would trade one Super Bowl and suck for the next five years. Go get Brandon and Ayuk right now. If you have to, I agree with that. What ain't happening? Dude, they just got rid of a $30 million cap hit and traded Diggs. You think they're going to get rid of that and they're going to take on a $30 million cap hit to bring in Ayuk too? I don't, not this year anyway. Someone like, someone like him ain't happen. Next year, maybe. CD Lamb, we'll see in the future. But now, get, yeah. it, get it out of your mind because Demir Bird and Deion Kane are going to be the back of the receivers, you know, the back of the roster receivers on this team this well, year. Well, I mean, he they might not be like, Look, I keep I've told you this before. Um, I think they're gonna play a lot of 12 personnel this year. Mm -hmm. I think they're not, and if you do a lot of 12 personnel, you only need like two wide receivers on the field. And I think that's what they want to do. And I've talked about this since God knows when that they want to control the ball, have a little bit more running, and you do that by having the, the stupid 12 personnel, which I'm not a, a giant fan of, but you know, if you want to talk about getting your your eleven best players on this on the field. I don't know. I I think Dalton Kincaid is much better than any wide receiver they have right now. I think Dawson Knox, who I'm not a fan of, I think he's probably what like in line with like Curtis Samuel, maybe like in terms of like if you were to do like a Madden rating or just something. If you you know what I mean, like right. hey, so it's like what what are you gonna do? Like you, you, I don't think they're gonna go four or five wide receivers. That I think that whole that thing is done. And then in terms of like the. Uh, the wide receiving room. Like I really wonder if there's some sort of transition with the bills they're seeing with wide receiver value with contracts. Cause they're seeing, a, there's a lot of money going to wide receivers right now. And they might be like, arguably like the second most important position on a team. And maybe they're in a, this, this world where they want to try to prove that they don't need like a star studded wide receiver, or they don't want to pay. They'll pay for a quarterback but they don't really want to pay for a wide receiver because those salaries have just gone through the roof. And I, I, I'm looking down the road. Like, obviously I don't think they're going to make any sort of giant deal, but like next year, are they going to go out there and then trade for a guy and pay him like, you know, th 25, $30 million a year. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, that might not be in the cards because they want, they may want to save their money and go buy 17 defensive linemen. Cause that's, we know that they like to put their money into that, that unit. So, yeah. you know, it's, 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 look, it's not a great wide receiver room. It stinks. And I, and I think I, well, I, I, I wouldn't go that far. It stinks. It stinks. Uh -huh. uh, what do you mean? You just, you just were panicky. I, it, it's, look, <laughs> not, could, could it, um, could it, could it, could it prove I, I, themselves? I, I could it prove, prove itself as being good. Yeah, sure. But I'm not, I, I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I have a hard time buying a second, a rookie second rounder. Their and, track record stinks. Yeah. And com and compared to most teams around the league, I'll give you that. I, I look, I'm talking about the wide receiver room having questions and fairness to the Bills. Most of my questions are about wide receivers four, five, and six. You yeah. know what and, I mean? And as, and as I, I told still, you, I still, 
I'm a high on Khalil Shakir. I've told you this many yes, times. Yes, you got him and on the Hall of Fame, and, and I, I got you. And I I'm, think Samuel is going to be a good player on this team. I think Joe Brady's going to use him the right way, and he might have the best season of his sure. career. Keon Coleman, to me, is the – I'm glad you, you – you, I'm glad you wanted to go this way because, to me, it makes me realize more than anything else that Keon Coleman is the true X factor. I kind of feel like we know that Dalton Kincaid is going to be better. He's going to be a top as high as three, sure. maybe as bad as 10, top tight end in the league. I think we know where we're going well, with him. But Keon Coleman is the X factor. He could be really, really good, or he could struggle to get any separation and be nothing more than a big-ass red zone target who makes a couple highlight catches right. a month. Um, he's the X factor to me. He's going to determine what this unit I think is. All right. Well, look, maybe, maybe I was uh, stink is probably a little over the top, but I, I don't <laughs> think it's very, I don't think it's very good. That's I fair. do think, I do think Shakir can make some plays cause like someone has to, but I, I really think, uh, you know, you worry about the back end of the, the wide receiving room. I'm telling you, I don't think we're going to see three, four wide receiver sets. I think we're going to see two tight ends a lot. I think you're going to see a couple of running backs in the backfield. I think you're you're not going to see a lot of that like four or five wide receiver like you did before, and that, in that case, then you don't have to really worry too much about who the third, fourth, and fifth wide receivers are, unless you know you're worried about depth and guys getting hurt, blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting to see what they do uh, when it starts. But I I think you're going to get a twelve personnel a lot this year. I really do. All right, let's take a real quick break. Come back. I want to run through six Buffalo Bills players that I think may need to really end up stepping up for the team uh, this season. All right, I'm back here with Joe from Queens. All right, I put it out of my mind mentally now, the the, the live stream fiasco that we tried to do uh, earlier. Spent some good time talking about wide receivers here. Um, I want to turn my attention for a few minutes anyway to six players on this team who I think Look, when you're a depth player, you always got to be ready to step up. That goes without saying. All 53 guys on the roster, I get that. But I, there's six guys in particular who I think really need to be ready to step up because I think there's a really good chance there's going to come a point during the season where they're going to go from a backup guy role player to somebody who couldn't play an important role on this team. Uh, I want to start with an offensive lineman, and that's Alec Anderson. Um at a minimum, Alec Anderson is this year's David Edwards from last year or um, Bobby Hart from two years ago when they go to that jumbo package and have that six offensive line and six uh, offensive lineman eligible. I think he's locked into that role. He's going to be the primary backup at guard. And I also think he's going to be the primary backup at center. I know a lot of people right now want to make Cedric Van Pan Granger, the fifth round rookie, a starter immediately because. You know, we talk about preseason, Joe, and you and you know, I, I try to tell you that it means something. Well, when you when you're out there with against third stringers and you look good, it's one thing. But guess what? Quinn and Williams and, and Wilkins aren't lined up next to you. Ed Oliver types trying to take your head off. You know what I'm saying? So Alec Anderson has been in the system now for a while. I think he's gonna be the center if something happens. That's why he was the second team center in that game anyway. But um, yeah, look, last year, Joe. And this is rare. All five offensive linemen for the Bills played all 17 games. Nobody got hurt. That don't happen a lot. You can't count on that. And Alec Anderson, especially if it's center guard, is going to be the first guy up. So I think he's going to be somebody who, who who might end up playing a pretty big role in this team this year. Well, let's hope he doesn't because I don't know anything <laughs> about him <laughs> outside of playing a little bit. Uh Big nasty streak. I did, I saved him earlier. We were talking about potential fights with the Steelers. I didn't want to name his name because we're going to be. Mm-hmm. I wanted to save it to talk about him now. He's another dude who might end up getting in somebody's face from with Pittsburgh and going at it. But well, anyway. I, yeah, I don't have. I mean, obviously, I'm not. Uh, I appreciate the honesty. Don't sit there and try to make up some bullshit about. Yeah, he's a big dude. Really I think what's his number? 77? Seventy seven. Seventy. Oh, so he has Eric Woods' old number. What I get yeah. seventy seven for him? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, you know, backup linemen are, you know, sometimes with line play, you always think about the system and like, how is the system? Like, you know, we we grew up watching like I always remember like seeing like the same offensive line, like in two, 2009 with like, you know, Eric Wood, Andy Levitri and Demetrius Bell. And it was terrible. And then the next year, yeah. Chan Gailey comes in and then all of a sudden the line just plays 
yeah. much better. And it's the same cast of guys, a different system. So I don't know. It's it's one something that's interesting to me because the Bills are technically changing their system from last year. You know, Dorsey's gone. Now Brady's completely, you know, yeah. in there. It's not like he retooled the whole thing. So I'm curious yeah. how that line will look. But yeah, I know depth char- depth wise, they don't seem to have a lot on the on the O line. Not in terms of proven depth. Nope. Yeah, Alec not. Anderson, Leal Collins, who's and, I'm still not sure he's not cooked right now. Yeah. Um, and they did. You know, it's funny because they they you know this is how the cap is kind of screw them a little bit. You know, they've they've been a team that has gotten veteran help on the offensive line, like for yeah. backups in the past. And this season, they, they kind of were like just Collins. Like, yeah, Collins yeah, is the only backup. Will Clapp has a little bit of experience, but yeah, for the most part, you're right. It's been a, a much younger offensive line. But anyway, so yeah, I think Alec Anderson is definitely going to be one. This guy is somebody I know you're familiar with, and it's Kyrie Lowe. Yeah. Um, I think he's had a really good camp. Um, I think he has solidified himself as that third outside corner on this team. And your starters are Douglas and Benford. But again, 17 games, man, somebody goes down. Go back to the last year's playoff loss to the Chiefs. Russell Douglas was out there on one leg and Christian Benford got hurt against Pittsburgh and literally didn't even play the game. Kyrie Elam started. I think this is a different Kyrie Elam this year, but anyway, you got to count on at some point, one of those two guys missing time and who the hell knows, man, if Elam plays that great, he may maybe still force his way on the field and against some teams ahead of Benford, you know, his style is completely different. They might want to match up differently against a different receiver or a different team. But anyway, Kyrie Lim could be a guy that I definitely see having a, a big role. So he needs to be ready to step up because the cornerback position, these guys get banged up a lot. So that, he's yeah. on my list as well. Yeah, I mean, I think he's on a lot of people's list. Um, he's going to be the ultimate, you know, two months from now, you know, I'm, if he's not playing, I'm going to be like, I told you all training camp don't mean shit because like, yeah. look at how great, look at how great he was. Um, well, first time he gets roasted, first time he gets in a game and then he gets roasted for a lot. Yeah, long and then he's on the bench at, forever. I mean, look, we'll that, see what happens. We'll, that Jacksonville we'll, game in London last year. Whew, God, I yeah. can still remember that game with him. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. It's interesting. You know, I, I don't know why it will t- it's taken him. If he's figured it out, it's it's it's, it's taken him a couple of years as interest as we as sure. Doesn't really, it doesn't really. I don't think it takes that long for corners. I mean, I, I think about you know something that's name, like I know every fucking corner in the league, but like you know, I remember Leos McKelvin was a guy who was just terrible, couldn't cover anyone, and then all of a sudden, like I think by the year three or four, he wasn't bad, mm-hmm. you know, and they they started him, and I think it was a lot of it was system because he didn't do well with the Jaron defense and then i think i think it was mike petting kind of like helped him out a little bit so it was like four or five years there because he was only he only stayed on the team because of um because he could he could return kicks and punts he was great at that but then he became a starter and he was good so i think they would love if if elam can play i mean when you view a guy who's a first rounder i don't give a fuck what you know i i don't i they in a way if you're a first rounder, they're going to give you a little bit of a more of a preferential treatment than like a third or fourth rounder where they're going to want you or like a fifth rounder. They're going to want you to succeed more. Obviously, with him, they I say that then I'm not going to undercut my own take because like his rookie year, it, that wasn't the case because he didn't play and they played right. a six rounder as, as a starter. So uh, we'll see. I mean, I'll. I'll believe it when I see it on in the regular season, how much this guy plays. Well, he might need to, whether he does successfully yeah, he or, does not, or not, is another yeah. so, but he is he's one of those six guys, and I'm talking about that. I think he just gonna end a, up having a key role. Whether he's up for the task or not, we'll find out. But yeah, he's, he just can't be a guy who plays like doesn't play at all. Like he just can't be. They can't right. afford that. Like Agreed. let this guy learn, let him cook, as the kids Agreed. say. Um, third guy on my list is, is the cat hater. We talked about him, so we really want uh, to dive into him. It's Matt Collins. Yeah. I think he's a borderline wide receiver three on this team right now. If anyone goes down, he's going to be a full-time wide receiver three. He did that production two years ago with Vegas. He had almost 700 yards. Josh loves him. Um, Joe Brady loves him. It's he's important to be block- friends with Josh. I'll just he's, say that. He, he sure, you got to sure. be friends with block- Josh. He's, he's a strong blocker. You know, you said you want to control the ball, run. Well, yeah. I think he's going to be like that Gabe Davis role in terms of blocking. Um He's going to have a role on this team. And again, you talk receivers, you're talking, you know, Shifty Shakir, Speedy Samuel, big boy Coleman. You aren't really talking about uh, Matt Collins much, but I do think he's going to play a, a pretty big role on this team. He's going to need to step up. Well, hey, as I said, um, 
it's a ragtag group, and I, nothing mm-hmm. would shock me of who the, you know, outside of Shakir, who obviously I think is like he's gonna be playing like every play for the most part. Everything else is sure. gonna be a little bit up in the air. So yeah, could he sneak in there? Like, like sure, because of injuries. Could he sneak in there if they want to go three, four wide receivers? Of course. Mm-hmm. Um. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see how this wide receiver group like nothing, everything would shock me because I'm not expecting much from them outside of Shakir. I do think Shakir will have a good year. I know I like giving you shit because you got him going to the Hall of Fame, but uh, I uh, I think outside of him, like everyone else is kind of a question mark. Like I could see this guy being good. I could also see this guy being terrible. Right. You know. So I mean, they still got Josh Allen and Josh Allen. He's he's as good as it gets, and you should have you should want your quarterback to get those guys who are mediocre and take them to another level. You right. know, not saying I want that. I'd rather have him with like elite weapons instead of him having to fucking make chicken chicken shit into chicken salad. But uh, <laughs> they don't agree with me, sadly. Let me all right. So the next one on this list, going to the defensive side, I want to be real clear too. I don't want this dude to have to step up. But I think he may need to, and if he has to, it means it's probably not, in fact, it's definitely not going to be good news. But Dorian Williams I'm talking about here, he's physically gifted, man. He really is. But he was kind of a mental disaster last year as a rookie. Uh, Mistakes seemed to have him in the doghouse with Sean McDermott an awful lot. He barely played in that Chiefs playoff loss. Um, where the, the AJ Klein was out there, and AJ you Klein were angry. About, the, you were angry about angry that. Angry as shit because it was like you played outside linebacker all year. I was like, he can't possibly be any worse than what AJ Klein was. So I, I'm, oh. God damn it, you just triggered me again. Oh. But anyway, physically it's, really gifted. And then you wanted you wanted Sean McDermott to answer that question. I remember that, and then everyone was angry at you because you kept oh. demanding it, and every and the content bros went after you. How yep. dare you demand him to answer that question? That's where I got attacked uh, by a pack of uh, cover one guys. <laughs> I yeah, went, those, those I went hyenas. off about that. Yeah, I those went off on that for sure. Times. But in all seriousness, man, I, he's, a, he's a physically gifted player. A lot of mental mistakes last year. A guy who seems like he's taking a, a step up at camp. Preseason meaningless, I get it. I like the way he looks Saturday. I like the way he's looked this summer. But obviously, if he plays, that means Matt Milano, something happens. Matt Milano's a big risk, all right? Let's just call it what it is. He's still, the leg is not fully ramped up. We haven't talked about this the whole podcast because there's nothing to report. Matt Milano banged up his arm or his elbow or something at practice on Tuesday, and uh, we don't know anything about that status, if it's anything significant or if it's not. He stayed on the field, never took his pads off, just didn't return to practice. We'll see. But the Bills were off on Wednesday. So no media accessibility, no, you know, media availability. God for, forbid anyone coaches. does their own job work and tries to dig a story up to find out if he's hurt. But well, yeah, sure. whatever. I'm sure they're being quiet. Or maybe they don't even know the extent of anything as of now. But as we record this, we don't know. But yeah. he's a risk. He's a health risk at this point. And, and Williams might have to play. And if some goes out with Matt Milano like it did last year, Bernard will be the middle linebacker. Dorian Williams this time around. Last year was Tyrell Dotson. This time it's going to be Dorian Williams. He could play a very significant role in this football team. Hopefully he doesn't have to, though. Yeah. Where was he drafted? He, he was a third, third rounder. Round. I mean, he, he could be he, he, he could be like your Terrell Bernard of a guy who didn't who had sure. the, the red shirt rookie year, didn't play at all. Then all they wait. You got to learn the system, all those freaking cliches. And then it, it was he, frustrating he, last year because he played some middle linebacker in college, and we thought maybe he was being drafted to be a middle linebacker. And they said immediately, nope. He's going to be playing the outside for the foreseeable future, and he still is. So anyway, he'll be a, a guy who could matter. Austin Johnson, defensive tackle, I got on this list as well. He's Daquan Jones' primary backup. Look, I like Daquan, man. Dude's 32 years old. You he missed him. most of last season after he tore his peck. He got hurt, did not play in the Bengals playoff loss two years ago. He's been hurt at camp. Uh, he didn't play Saturday. He's had missed some time on a groin. He did return to practice on Tuesday, so we'll see. And you know... Much to your chagrin, that uh, John McDermott freaking loves playing a lot of defensive tackles. So line. he's going to yeah. get some run, man. I definitely think so. I, I I worry about Daquan Jones a lot. I I I tend to worry about defensive tackles who are on the wrong side of thirty. I feel like sure. you can easily fall off a cliff. You know, for me, I've watched a lot of football and I've seen guys who just they hit that thirty. We talked about Jordan Phillips earlier. You you hit that thirty, and then some 
mark, it's it, it can be over pretty fast. And I, yeah. I wonder if these injuries he's been sustaining the last couple of years, if they, if they're, this is like this is what life is past thirty, it can happen. You sure. know, same things, same thing with Milano. I've I've talked about it before. Milano has played a lot of football, and he's not twenty six anymore. He's he's in this. He's thirty now, and you know, I worry about. You know, the only thing I can think of is like, well, how do you not like not be too worried as well? You know, they missed him for most of last year and the defense seemed OK for the most part. But, yeah, you know, you, you got to worry about that, especially in the defensive line. So I think. Sure. You can definitely see that um, playing out with more guys getting thrusted in there. Yep. Um, I know Dwayne Carter was a third round pick. You know, that's the guy a lot of people are talking about. You know, he's going to have a good role. Kind of Austin Johnson's just sliding under the radar. But, yeah, he's going to have a role. One of my favorite things about this team right now, we talk about the wide receivers and the question marks, and it's not that good. Um, I think the defensive line as a whole, and especially defensive tackle, has been upgraded this offseason. I think Austin Johnson, Dwayne Carter, significantly better than Jordan Phillips and Tim Settle and Puna Ford, Linval Joseph. I think it's going to be a strength of this football team. Defensive edge, you lose Leonard Floyd. He got a lot of sacks, but he only had one sack in his last eight games. Dwayne Smoot doesn't bring pass rushing juice, but he's better against the run. And Von Miller, hopefully... It's going to be 100%. He certainly looks the part right now. So, anyway, that's a position I like. Last guy on my list, kind of like an Adoring Williams scenario. You don't really want to have to see him out there playing because that means the star player gets banged up. But Teron Johnson plays balls to the wall, and that kind of leads to him getting banged up. Cam Lewis, I'm talking about here. He's uh, he's the primary backup there. Um, he could also play safety. He'll have a big role in special teams. Uh, but, yeah, I get a little... As much as I love Teron Johnson, he just plays like an animal, man. And that kind of yeah. leads uh, leads you to getting hurt a couple of times. So Cam Lewis is a good guy. Like it or not, you're probably going to see him out there a couple of some key points of some games because of uh, because of injuries. So yeah, he's, he's on my he, list as well. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's been burned a couple of different times, Cam. So um, yeah. see what happens. Uh, look, the, the depth is not what it, what it used to be. You know, like Brandon Bean said it before, this team's in transition. And I think the depth is, is I mean, uh, defensive that's line. That's just depth of starters now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, and I'll give you, yeah, if you want to say the defensive line has upgraded, um, I want to see it to believe it because I felt like people were high on Puna Ford last year and Lev- and Joseph, they were high when they got on here. And they were high because they were terrible. So they, they didn't do much. So we'll see what happens with the new guys coming here. Um sure. I don't know. We'll see. I, I look, if Von Miller is back to what he was, I don't think he will be. I'll just say that now. You can mark my words. I just I can't see a, a 34 year old coming off two ACL injuries in the last decade to be like the same. Like, will he be will will he be as bad as last year? Probably not, but Almost I don't impossible. think possible. Yeah, he was I, I don't see him getting like 14, 13 sacks. I think he'll be eight. He'll be, Eight, maybe. What, what I don't would you set the over under? What would you set the over under at Von Miller sacks for this year? If you have to make that choice right now, what would you set the over under at? Seven. You're Vegas. Seven? seven. Yeah, that's a good number. Seven, I, seven, seven to eight. I think. I think. Look, I I think they're going to be care. I I still think they're going to be careful with him. Like I've told you before, they love that defensive line rotation of doom. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, I just can't see it. I, I cannot. I, you know, I should look this up. Like how many defensive linemen, defensive ends at his age can still produce? It's and again, coming off two, two a, a bad injury that like cost you a year. Like it not only like cost him twenty twenty two, it cost him like all of last year because he wasn't good. Yeah, he stunk last year. Yeah, and and I just I just I, like look, I'm glad he beat Spencer Brown on seven on seven drill with no pads, and everyone fucking couldn't was like, oh, he's back. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going there yet. Like he, <laughs> I'm not like he, like, uh, Hey, like, I, like I said, like he and Elam are, are like the camp here. Like, look, you have all these other guys like Chase Claypool being the MVP of the OTAs didn't amount to jack shit. But for Elam and Vaughn who have gotten a lot of like, man, look at these guys. Like they look good so far. Like that's the, those are the two guys you're going to see if they're, they, they're good at. Cause you can, Look, you can Terrell Shavers. You can say, "Oh yeah, he looks good, and he's had some run with the starters." But is he going to play? Probably not. Like maybe he will. But like, if you're going to ask me who's going to play more, it's going to be Vaughn and Elam are going to play more than that. Sure, guy will probably play. And that's where we're going to see like if all my bullshit of yelling about OTAs and 
August football doesn't mean dick. Don't buy into it. We'll find out like if those guys are any good in September if they're playing. Now, if they're playing great, then I'll come on here and be like, hey, I guess I was wrong in the training camp. Fucking scouts are geniuses or not geniuses. They got, they, you know, a, a clock is right twice a day when it's broken. So congrats. But um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, that's it. OK, can we go now? I need to go. To I gonna, <laughs> we're done. I wanted We're done. I wanted minutes. to ask you. I, I wanted to uh, ask you one last quick question. I sweet. feel like I know the answer. But Fuck all right. So you got no. the Pittsburgh scrimmage today. Oh, can't wait. Or this, oh, yeah. you know, today for people yes. in the game Saturday against Pittsburgh. Is there literally anything whatsoever that you're looking forward to at all in terms of the Bills at all? Anything? I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing you panic and have a heart attack. If, That's they, fair. if they play I like will shit. too. Oh, I uh, will. I, no, I'm not looking forward to anything. I'm not. I, I just want look, <laughs> my goal, my goals is look, just don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. I hope the kickers do well because I, you know, Tyler Bass has been kind of weird. Like there's a little bit of like every day kind of feels like, oh, he's back. And then another day he like misses some field goals. And I, I hope, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a shitty field to kick in. Like Heinz Field is one of the worst f- fields to kick in. So I hope he makes some kicks. So at least and then the punter does well, because, again, mm-hmm. I, as I said on the last p- podcast, it's very hard to fake kicking in the preseason. Like you're not going to take a step. You're not going to bring out it's it there's no such thing as I vanilla kicking. There's no such thing as vanilla kicking. You know, right. whereas vanilla schemes like you're going to kick and kick field goals. So I hope sure. those guys make kicks and uh I hope Josh Allen is fine, healthy. Um and that's it. That's all I care about. You know, I got I, one thing. Oh, one God, thing and I want, reduced it now. You almost won me over a couple of days ago and a little bit today too. No, you need but There's content. one thing I would like to see. One thing and one thing only. I don't care about the score winning for the most part, how the starters look, yada, yada, yada. I want one thing. I want to see the bills be able to run the football because Ooh. Chicago and at camp against the first team defense, they have looked like shit running the football, man. I have not seen running lanes anywhere. I hope that Joe Brady and, and Cromer and the offensive line come up with a couple of plays where we can start to see, can the bills run the football? Can James cook and Ray Davis, run the football for a driver too. You don't got to be doing any kind of crazy, you know, trick plays or anything like that. Smash mouth football, but actually instead of just zone blocking or whatever, match up with Pittsburgh and actually try to have some, a couple run calls, basic run calls, and see if you can run the football with any success. I want to see how James Cook looks, and I especially want to see how Ray Davis looks behind an offensive line that's actually going to block somebody. It's the only thing at this point, I'll probably talk myself in other more shit, but right now, all I care about is I'd like to see the Bills actually try to effectively run the football. Say, okay, I don't ah. care, but right. uh, I don't care. I, you know, if you want to see James Cook run, watch the highlights from last season. Okay, if you want, <laughs> that's fair enough. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, I am curious. Like they, they are look. They don't have a lot of weapons on the outside, as and I think. And we'll, we'll wrap it up when I say we wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I joke, but um, I. They don't have that like deep threat, and they don't have like that Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs, and it's cliche to say that can that defenses have to worry about anymore. And when you do, when you have to worry about those guys, then you can run the football a lot better because you're like not concentrating. Now you don't have that anymore, so it's going to be probably harder to run the football because on the outside you don't have like those threats. You can play your guys much closer on the on the on, you know up the line of scrimmage and all that sh- shit. You know, eight guys in the box, seven guys, whatever the fuck you want to call it in the box. But uh, I, but you're not going to see that in Pittsburgh. You're going to see it against the Cardinals to see how that works. Sure. But um, we'll see how they run. Hey, I, I, I have my doubts a little bit, especially with Mitch Morris gone. I, I don't like moving uh, a backup to the set, to the guard and be like, you're going to start. And I've, I've said that before. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, yeah. let's uh let, let, let's wrap this up. Yeah, I, let's go. I do let's appreciate go. I do appreciate you uh coming on really late again on a on Wednesday night to record this episode. Yeah, if you want to be a guest on Pat's podcast, DM him. He needs new guests. Okay, so we, we I, you could you can come in our quarterback room. I don't have to be the emergency quarterback. So if you're out there and you want to talk to Pat and you have like a little bit of a social media following and you pander to Pat, you know that's all he wants. He just wants you to kiss your ass, his ass a little bit, and be objective. Uh, like crappy beer, uh, go golfing. He wants you on his podcast. So uh, yeah. So send him his DM, you know, send him your, send your resume, DM him. 
Um, but if you're if you have me blocked, you can't come on this podcast ever. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is there's a couple of guys that I know come on this podcast who have me blocked. They're, no, that you know I, I'm starting the precedent now, so we're done. All right, wrap it up. Let's get out of here. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe from Queens again. Follow me on Twitter at Buffalo Wins. Tomorrow I actually will have a guest. Uh, PK from the Buffalo Sports Collective is going to join me. So till tomorrow, talk to you then.